Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Now, I'm gonna be very honest with you. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a controversial video, but um, I think this is a technique that's really cool and it could potentially be a time saver for a lot of people doing environment work. So let's get to it. This is what we're gonna be looking at today. We're gonna be, or I'm gonna be teaching you the process to generate this kind of tileable textures that you can use for like general decoration in your games or in your like commercials or whatever thing you wanna do. Now, the reason why this video is going to be a little bit controversial is because we're going to be using AI. And I know, I know, AI has been on the like conversation for almost a year now, I think. And um, at first, we were like, nah, nothing's going to happen. And now we're seeing the things that AI can create. And we're like, well, where are the jobs going to be going? Like, is this something that we need to worry about. And as I've mentioned before, it's not so much a problem of whether we are going to have to worry about it. It's more of a problem of how are we going to use it as a tool to keep ourselves relevant, right? So I think the worst thing that you can do is try to like put yourself in a situation where you think AI is not going to happen or it's not going to do anything to you. You need to understand what's going on with the industry and see how this can be, well, again, utilized as a tool. So uh, we're going to be using Mid Journey. Give me just one second. There we go. So Mid Journey, as you guys know, is uh, this um, pay service. It's, I believe, like $10 a month or something like that. And you get access to prompts, right? So you can do your own prompts. And as you can see here, I was doing some tests for tileable textures. Now, the interesting thing about this uh, particular um, software is that it gives you really, really, really interesting results. Now, I'm going to be the first to tell you guys that even though the results look really nice, they're just like I wouldn't say garbage, right? But from a design perspective, they're just noise. The the AI thing that we have right here, it really doesn't understand the things. It just understands like the general noise. So it's not a designer. And this does not replace a designer that's going to be like manually doing this sort of things to generate something that looks a little bit more interesting. However, I still think that it generates results that look relatively okay. So for instance, I gave the prompt Mayan floor ruins. And then in mid journey, we use this little uh, flags to, to tell it to make the tileable. So in this case, we created a, this shape right here. And again, as you can see, it's just abstract art and it does look a little bit like a Mayan thing, but it's just abstract, right? Now, why is this useful? Well, when you're doing a, a, a game or when you're doing a, a big environment, one of the things that becomes really, really complicated is to fill this environment with a lot of information. And of course, we could go into ZBrush and design our own pattern and our own symbols, do a lot of research about the context and the gerund, but that would take weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of work, right? So we can spend like two months doing a perfectly tileable texture that properly portrays the Mayan culture. Or in this case, if we just need a fast, like tileable texture like this one right here, we can just go into, um, what's the word, into Mid Journey and generate this. I'm going to give you another example. Remember how we always talk about alphas and how um, we, we need to create our own alphas? I can look for damaged with texture black and white just like that it's not going to be even tile it's going to call this uh, damage uh, uh, wood texture black and white and what we're going to get is as soon as this thing finishes the the processing is we're going to get some options that we could potentially transform into alphas and this is where the second part of this comes into play but before we move forward to the second part i just want to remind you guys that we have all of our courses available through skillshare Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. So yeah, even though AI is a huge, huge thing here in our, our world, especially in the art world, that doesn't mean that you don't need to learn all of the basic skills because someone that only knows how to do prompts and AI, it's not going to be able to generate um, like all of the information that they might need. There we go. So look at this. For instance, from all of these guys, I think the ones that are most useful are these two. And this is something that we could eventually go outside, find a tree, take a photo, bring it back and just do it. But we can use something called um, this AI thing to generate all of these images for us. And it does 
does make our lives so much easier. And the cool thing about this is no one else in the world has these exact same images. So that means that if I convert these images into alphas so that I can use them in my projects, I'm going to have a unique sort of uh, advantage because it's going to be a very, like, it's a new image, right? It's been generated. And again, I don't think using AI in this particular way is hurting our industry. I think it's a way to to utilize this as a tool. You let me know in the comments. And again, I'm open for, for discussion. I know this is a very hot topic right now, but um, well, that's that's what it is. So once you have your image, I'm gonna open a new project. I'm gonna say create new, I'm using 3D Sampler. And 3D Sampler is the tool that we're gonna be using to generate our uh, tileable texture. So the way this works is actually very, very simple. To just open 3D Sampler, just go over here and we select the image. As you can see, this is the Mayan ruins image that I have right here. And we're gonna use AI again. This is something, and this is what I, I find a little bit funny about AI. We've been using AI a lot. It's just that AI has now come like really or has like advanced really really far and we're seeing it do things that we didn't thought were possible right so if you've been using unfold 3d for instance for the last couple of years when you're in your uvs that's sort of like ai it's automatic uh, automatization of a process that would take us a long time to do and we're doing it nowadays if you've been using c remesher to clean up some of your geometries that's it's not exactly AI, right? But it's automatization processes that allows us as artists to save time in things that were very time consuming. So in this case, for instance, um, someone under the comments asked me, hey, could we do like the old fashioned way of going into Photoshop, getting the color, creating the roughness, creating the metallic? You don't need to do that anymore. You don't need to go layer by layer creating this stuff. You can just use something like this, which is a substance sampler to look at this, create a tileable texture with proper height information, with proper normal information, with good roughness information. In this case, there's no metallic information. We got our height information and we got our ambient occlusion. So again, you don't need to do this manually now and is that a good thing is that a bad thing uh I, i'm not sure to be honest i'm not sure I'm, I'm i'm in that position where i'm not really sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing for artists but what i do know is that it makes our lives a lot easier so if you know how to utilize it i do think it could be beneficial or beneficial for us again let me know in the comments i know it's going to be <laughs> hopefully it's not going to be as rough as i think it's going to be but uh yeah there we go so as you can see here the only thing i need to know is uh go over here to the share option and export this as our materials as you can see i've already done them over here I got all of my maps uh, ready and exported. And in this particular example, I'm using Substance or Substance. I'm using Marmoset to, to get this done. So by default, when we create a new material, uh, the new material does not know that it wants to be displaced. So we can connect things such as the albedo map. There we go. We can connect the uh, normal map, for instance. In this case, the normal map looks a little bit weird. We might need to uh, flip it so that it looks uh, correct. There we go. And then we can do the roughness over here. There we go. We can go down here to the occlusion. By the way, if you've never used Marmoset, it's a great, great software. We do have the complete guide to Marmoset 4 available as well. And I'm gonna drop this um, ambient occlusion down here. That's gonna give me just a little bit of extra, extra depth. Now, the big one, the big, uh, the big uh, thing is all the way up here, the texture options. And the cool thing is this is a, a tileable texture. So if I need to make this pattern like really, really, really small, as you can see, I can tile it right here. And thanks to the fact that we created a tileable texture all the way coming from, um, what's the word, from uh, Mid Journey in this case, you can use DALI, you can use Stable Diffusion, a lot of different softwares. But thanks to that, we're able to get this uh, right here. I'm gonna rotate this for uh, 90 degrees so that it's like straight. It was like rotated weirdly and then now the only thing i need to do is i need to tell it to displace this thing because right now as you can see if we go really close to it it's very flat it still looks really good like if this was a texture on a, on a game this would still look very very nice um i, I was inspired by doing this sort of rinse uh, thanks to like tears of the kingdom you know zelda i, I know they didn't do it with artificial intelligence or at least I, I i don't think they did but they have this very like weird patterns all in the ruins and stuff and they don't make a lot of sense from a i mean they make sense from the science perspective what i mean is it's just like noise that you get on your on your stuff so technically you could do that kind of stuff with this as long as you can control the prompt a little bit more in this case i just threw in a very quick and fast prompt but there are ways in which you can like modify them or or use them to generate more specific effects so to tile this or to to actually displace this thing here on the on the software and make it actually like uh uh, generating more volume and more shadows first of all we need to go here to displacement and we need to tell it to use height displacement now it's expecting a height map which we already have here on our elements is this height information right here but before we do that on the plane itself we need to go to the plane shape 
and or the plane uh, right here and we need to change the subdivision to in this case i'm using pn triangles you can use a lot of them i like using pn uh, triangles because it gives a a nice uh, sort of um smooth uh, it's very good for like uh, like tessellation and stuff uh, I, as you can see, I'm using subdivide and I am subdividing this 100 times. So it's, it's a lot of triangles. You can see here we have 2 million triangles, but we need that many triangles so that when we drop in the height information right here, you're going to see that this actually pushes the elements. Look at that. So technically we could export this, like uh, use Nanite or something like that inside of Unreal, and we could get a really, really nice effect. Of course, in this case, I'm going to lower the scale a little bit more to generate something that looks a little bit softer on our effect. So yeah that's that's pretty much it guys that's the that's the quick demo right here and uh, i've been doing some research online and there's people like uh, important people doing this or following this process where they use uh, ai generated images to generate the textures and then use those textures instead of things like substance designer substance painter again uh, substance sampler as i just showed you and uh, well yeah you can start creating your own world or your own like a whole a set of textures and materials with very very cool generated images so that's it my friends short video today hopefully you like this uh, quick uh, tutorial again let me know in the comments what you think i know it's a divisive topic i know there's people with very very strong feelings one side or the other uh but hopefully you guys can see the advantage of creating an image so 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 fast it's just just simple planes simple cylinders for instance this cylinder right here i'm using this cliff we can also increase the scale for instance as you can see the one thing that we're going to need for this particular cylinders is we're going to need to increase the subdivisions quite a bit you can see on this one this one has a little bit more subdivisions that's because of the of the uvs but as you can see we can generate a lot of textures that would be very very complicated to do uh or very time consuming to do traditionally so hope you like this video my friends make sure to leave a like share and subscribe it really helps the channel and we're going to be back in the next couple of days with more 3d content make sure to join our discord as well if you want to talk and uh, share some of your stuff and that's pretty much it for today i'll see you back on the next one Bye-bye.